The idea behind non-conforming loans, also called subprime loans, is to provide lending programs for those borrowers whose financial picture doesn't meet the underwriting requirements of traditional government-backed or conventional loans. This could be the case for a variety of reasons. For example, if a borrower currently has a second mortgage, this loan is a non-conforming loan. Conforming loans are, are a low risk to the lender, so they offer the lowest interest rates, but conforming loans also have strict underwriting guidelines. Non-conforming loans, on the, under, on the other hand, have no set guidelines and vary wildly from lender to lender. They are often rated according to the creditworthiness of the borrower and have changed enormous, enormously over the past decade. Lenders who provide subprime loans must either hold and service these loans or sell them to a non-institutional investor as the GSEs will not purchase these riskier loan products. When choosing a loan product, there are many types of loan products available in today's marketplace. The MLO will work with clients to determine which product is right for them. The chosen loan product will determine the interest rate, how payments will be calculated, and how the loan will amortize. It is important to match the correct loan pro product to the correct customer. The term suitability would fit well here. Just as clothes are typically not one size fits all, neither are mortgage products. For example, it would not be prudent to suggest that a borrower on a fixed income, such as Social Security, to take out an adjustable rate mortgage. The reason being, if the interest rate would adjust upward, the borrower would typically not have the wherewithal to apply additional money per month to their loan payment. This could result in the borrower neglecting basic needs such as food, medicine, or utilities just to cover the adjusted loan payment. The, this adjustment and its, results, and its resulting impact on the payment are sometimes referred to as payment shock. So while non-conforming loans offer flexibility for borrowers with unique financial situations, it's important to consider alternative options that provide stability and predictability over the long term. With that in mind, let's now shift our focus to the characteristics of a fixed rate mortgage. Fixed rate mortgages have an interest rate and monthly payment that remain the same over the life of the loan. This type of mortgage loan is generally considered to be the least risky loan product available due to payment stability. Payment terms are usually for 10, 15, 20, or 30 years. On a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, the borrower's monthly payment will primarily be applied to interest. As a result, a comparatively low portion of the principal will, will be paid off in the early years of the loan. For the 15 and 20 year fixed rate mortgages, the monthly payments are somewhat higher, but a larger percentage of the principal will be paid towards the front end of the loan. Having explored, excuse me, having explored the basics of a fixed rate mortgage, let's now pivot our attention to another popular mortgage option, um, adjustable rate mortgages, which are also known as ARMS. ARMS have an interest rate that increases or decreases over the life of the loan based on the interest rate environment. These loans have the following characteristics. First, ARMS have a starting interest rate that is generally lower than the rate offered on a fixed rate mortgage. ARMS also have an interest rate that is tied to a particular index. The rate change in this type of product will also produce a payment change to the borrower. There are many different indices that are used in the making of mortgage loans. A few of the more common examples are U.S. Treasury bills, the SOFR, or Secured Overnight Financing Rate, as well as the COFI, which is the Cost of Funds Index. ARMS also have caps limiting the amount of change in the interest rate and or payment and established for the adjustment period, which is the interest rate cap, the life of the loan, which is the lifetime cap, and finally the payment, which is the payment cap. It is important for an MLO to be sure the borrower is comfortable with the likelihood that the payment will increase throughout the life of the loan. In some cases, the borrower has the ability to qualify for a higher loan amount than under the terms of a fixed rate mortgage due to the lower initial payments. The trade-off is the uncertainty of not knowing how much the payment may change. As you may recall, this can lead to payment shock, which may lead a borrower to default on their loan if they are not prepared for the payment increase. Regardless of start rate, however, borrowers must qualify under the fully indexed rate at the time of approval if the rate can adjust within the first five years. On the next page, we will cover the components of an adjustable rate mortgage.